Hello and welcome back. Um, in the previous lecture uh, on common drain amplifiers output resistance part one, what we did was we, did, we derived the output resistance of a common drain amplifier as this. R out equals one over GM plus GMB, right? Okay, so no, what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to use this output resistance and possibly derive the gain of the amplifier. Basically, we're going to do some final touches, that's all. So, so it won't be very difficult, so just uh, keep up with me. All right, okay, here we go. Um, so this is the small signal model we drew when we were finding the upper resistance where we had um, a voltage source to do some perturbations, basically bring in some disturbance in voltage and then finally see what kind of change in IX would be visible. Right? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're gonna play with this current source right here, right? If you remember, we said V1 equals minus Vx, right? And the same thing for VBS as well. Minus Vx. It does make sense, right? Because uh, the source has a Vx uh, voltage, the bulk is grounded. So if it's VSB, it's Vx. It's because it's VBS, it's got to be minus Vx, okay? That's all it is. Not a big deal. So if we have to incorporate this into this uh, current source right here, how would the small signal model look? No, the only thing that, that'll change here is the direction of the current, right? If we have to show a positive GMVX there, right? That's all it is. So if you see, uh, let me draw this right here again. Um, I've got to do this real quick. GM V1. And here we have Vx, um, Ix, and uh, here we have V1 again, right? Okay, now that we have a GM Vx for the current source here, uh, it's pretty simple to see how this thing behaves. Basically, the, the magnitude of the current source depends on the voltage right across it, right? Like Vx is right across uh, the current source here. Right? Do you see that? It's basically this thing right here. Okay. So let me let me take a different color. Um, so we can a current source that depends. I mean, the magnitude of a current source depends on a voltage. What would that be? That element is nothing but a resistor, right? So if we go ahead and draw this small signal model again. We're drawn it so many times, I'm sure you're bored, but you know, it's good practice. So this is Vx again, plus minus Ix. And this is Gm V1. Uh, pay attention, I put it, an arrow mark here, but in that hurry, it doesn't look like an arrow. <laughs> so this is grounded again here. And here, Gmb can be modeled as a resistor. But GM basically is transconductance, but we need resistance, so 1 over GMB is the resistance, okay? All right, perfect. Now, if you look at this diagram, this thing that we've done right here, this can be done only in the case of a source follower or a common drain amplifier. It cannot be done in any other case, okay? That is modeling of GMB with a resistor. It can be done only in the case of a source follower or a common drain amplifier, basically. So what is this basically? If this resistor appears across, I mean, appears parallel to the output voltage, right? Here's where we take the output voltage, V out. I'm gonna draw that in just a short while. So basically it's in parallel with the output voltage. So if any resistance is parallel to something else, it's gonna reduce the entire resistance, right? So two resistances in parallel are lower than, the, than each of them, right? So we know that. Now let's let's take a look at R out. R out was given by one over GM plus GMB, right? Okay. So now if we look at this, if we kind of play with this equation, let's say we do one over R out equals GM plus GMB, right? And now this 
these each of them can be written as this 1 over 1 over GM plus 1 over 1 over GMB right so does this ring a bell basically 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 what is this this is a parallel connection of two resistances that's all it is right so if you see 1 over GM is a resistance and 1 over GMB is the other resistance so 1 over that plus 1 over that is very simple right so <laughs> R out equals 1 over GM in parallel with 1 over GMB right this again shows us why the output resistance of a common drain amplifier is lower than others than others um, of course if you don't consider GMB if you don't consider body effect here which you shouldn't you ha just have to do that but suppose you just ignore it uh, R out will be 1 over GM right okay all right so let's let's go ahead and derive um, the gain of the common state I mean the common drain amplifier and uh, we're gonna be doing this little modification here so remember what we derived before for the gain of the common drain amplifier we did GM times RS over 1 plus GM plus GMB the whole times RS correct me if I'm wrong and we said RS is huge I mean, let's consider RS to be huge, so we can ignore one, you know, the entire thing is really big. So GM RS over GM plus GMB times RS, and RS, RS cancel. So GM over GM plus GMB. This is what we got from the large signal analysis and also the small signal models. What we're going to do now is we're going to do something slightly different, right? So for this um, common drain amplifier let's go ahead and draw the small signal model again okay so what would it be uh, we have a V in here V in and this is plus and this is minus again V1 probably and here we're not gonna include the RS because it's huge and it's already in parallel so it can be ignored, right? Um, I'll, I'll draw it, and once I draw it, you'll understand better. So GM uh, V1 here, and this is GMB, right? Sorry, 1 over GMB, right? And this is V out, isn't it? But then the RS is basically just parallel, so we ignore that. Right? And anyways, it's going to just can't get cancelled. So this is called the intrinsic common drain amplifier. Um, I mean, the small signal model of the intrinsic common drain amplifier. Okay. Now, if we have to derive the gain from here, uh, we got to make some modifications, right? We got to make. I mean, we got to um, uh, deduce the seven and equivalent of this circuit, and from there we can derive the gain. Uh, let's see how to do that so basically this is where you're looking at for the seven equivalent seven and equivalent so what your circuit will finally look like is just this current source becomes one over GM in series right so I'm hoping that seven and equivalent structures are not confusing one over GM and here you have a V out and here you have 1 over GMB right and if you had to do AV for this for example gain which is V out over V in this is nothing but a potential divider right you have a V out here V in up there basically and then a 1 over GM and 1 over GMB uh, 1 over GMB at the bottom right so what would this be 1 over GMB over 1 over GM plus 1 over GMB that's all right I uh, let me do this right here again so you have V in here R1 R2 and you have a V out here so what would V out over V and B 
v out over v in is r2 over r1 plus r2. I've done the same thing here. Okay? So uh, work it out on paper so that we're not confused at all. So if we can work around this, what will we get? 1 over gmb over gm times gmb and gm plus gmb. Right? And gmb, gmb cancel. And this GM goes to the top. So you get GM over GM plus GMB, which is the original gain we got, right? That's all it is. Okay? So this, this is really cool. And, um, you know, there's a, there, there's a third circuit coming up in the next lecture. Don't miss to see the, other, the next lecture. You just have to see it. There's a super easy way of calculating gain that I'm going to introduce there. Um, so I will see you there. So of course, before right before I go, what is this? Um, sorry, what what can you break this up as? You can say GM times R out, right? And what was R out? It's basically GM times one over GM in parallel with one over GMB, right? Basically, what this means is the transconductance of the input transistor times the resistances connected to the output node, right? That's all it is. So we, we will build on this concept even more in the next coming lecture. Great, thanks. Uh, see you in the next lecture.